subscribe ecofan for more educational videos thank you Carrying capacity refers to the maximum number of individuals of a particular species that a given environment can sustainably support over a prolonged period. This concept is used in ecology to describe the relationship between a population and its environment, and it is often used to predict the impact of human activities on ecosystems. Every environment has a limited amount of resources, including food, water, shelter, and space. These resources are required by individuals of a population to survive, grow, and reproduce. As the population grows, it consumes more resources, which can eventually lead to resource depletion and a decline in the population size. However, if the population size is small enough, the resources may be abundant enough to support the population's growth. The carrying capacity of an environment is influenced by a variety of factors, including the availability of resources, predation, disease, and competition among individuals. These factors can limit the population size by reducing the number of individuals that can be sustained by the available resources. Understanding carrying capacity is important for managing and conserving ecosystems. If the carrying capacity of an environment is exceeded, the population may experience a decline due to resource depletion or other environmental factors. This can have ripple effects on the entire ecosystem, leading to the decline or loss of other species that depend on the population. By understanding the carrying capacity of an environment, ecologists and conservationists can develop strategies to protect and sustainably manage ecosystems for the benefit of all species. There are several types of carrying capacity that ecologists and environmental scientists use to describe the relationship between a population and its environment. Absolute carrying capacity. This refers to the maximum number of individuals of a species that an environment can support indefinitely, without experiencing a decline in resources or other environmental factors. This is a theoretical concept and is rarely achieved in nature. Realized carrying capacity. This refers to the actual number of individuals of a species that an environment can support over a prolonged period, taking into account environmental factors such as predation, disease, and competition for resources. Environmental carrying capacity. This refers to the maximum number of individuals of a species that an environment can support given the available resources and the level of disturbance or pollution in the environment. Social carrying capacity. This refers to the maximum number of individuals of a species that an environment can support without causing social or cultural conflicts among humans, such as competition for resources or changes in the local economy. Economic carrying capacity. This refers to the maximum number of individuals of a species that an environment can support without causing economic problems, such as damage to crops or infrastructure, or loss of income for local communities. Each type of carrying capacity is important for understanding the relationship between a population and its environment and for developing effective conservation and management strategies. By understanding the different types of carrying capacity, we can work to protect and sustainably manage ecosystems for the benefit of all species, including humans. Several factors can affect the carrying capacity of an environment. These factors can be grouped into two broad categories, biotic factors and abiotic factors. Biotic factors. Biotic factors are living factors that can influence the carrying capacity of an environment. These include Predation. The presence of predators can limit the population size of a prey species, reducing its carrying capacity. Competition. When two or more species compete for the same resources, such as food, water, and shelter, it can lead to a reduction in the carrying capacity for all species involved. Disease. The spread of disease can reduce the population size of a species, which can in turn affect the carrying capacity of the environment. Abiotic factors. Abiotic factors are non-living factors that can affect the carrying capacity of an environment. Climate. The climate of an environment can affect the availability of resources such as water and food, which can in turn affect the carrying capacity of the environment. Soil fertility. The fertility of the soil can affect the growth of plants, which can affect the availability of food for herbivores and in turn affect the carrying capacity of the environment. Natural disasters. Events such as floods, fires, and hurricanes can reduce the carrying capacity of an environment by destroying or damaging habitats and resources. Human activities can also have a significant impact on the carrying capacity of an environment. For example, deforestation, overfishing, and pollution can all reduce the availability of resources and damage habitats, which can in turn affect the carrying capacity of the environment. By understanding the factors that affect carrying capacity, we can work to protect and sustainably manage ecosystems for the benefit of all species. The concepts of R-selected and K-selected species can also be applied to the carrying capacity of an environment.
Our selected species tend to have high reproductive rates and can quickly colonize new or disturbed environments, making them well suited to environments with high carrying capacity. In such environments, there are abundant resources available to support a high population density, and the rapid growth rate of our selected species can help them take advantage of these resources. K-selected species, on the other hand, tend to have lower reproductive rates and invest more energy in caring for their offspring. They are better adapted to environments with lower carrying capacity, where resources are limited, and competition for those resources is high. In such environments, the slower population growth rate and greater investment in offspring care of K-selected species can help them better cope with limited resources and intense competition. It is important to note, however, that the relationship between R-selected and K-selected species and carrying capacity is not always straightforward. For example, the carrying capacity of an environment can be affected by a variety of factors, including both biotic and abiotic factors, and can vary over time. Additionally, the reproductive strategies of different species can also interact with other factors, such as predation or competition, to influence the carrying capacity of an environment. Thank you for watching the video.